I just think about the guy who taught me all I know. The Electric Company, a groundbreaking 1970s TV series, was created to help children improve their reading skills. The casting process was crucial to ensure the right mix of talent, chemistry, and comedic timing. For the role of the show's narrator, actor Ken Roberts was chosen due to his clear diction and authoritative voice, making him ideal for guiding young viewers through the learning experience. Morgan Freeman, in the early stages of his career, was cast as Easy Reader, a character who promoted the joy of reading. His warm, soothing voice and natural charisma made him a perfect fit for the role. The show's producers wanted a diverse cast to represent a wide range of characters. They found Bill Cosby, who would later become a household name, to be an excellent addition to the ensemble. His comedic skills and natural charm brought humor and relatability to the series. Judy Graubart, a seasoned actress and comedian, was cast as Jennifer of the Jungle, a character who used humor and wordplay to teach phonics. Her experience in improvisational comedy contributed significantly to the show's fast-paced and engaging nature. Louis Avalos, a Cuban-American actor, was chosen for his versatility and ability to play multiple characters. He portrayed various roles, including the lovable Spider-Man parody, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. The casting process for The Electric Company was meticulous, focusing on each actor's unique talents and abilities. Through careful selection and collaboration, the cast formed a cohesive and entertaining ensemble that would leave a lasting impact on children's television. Quiet down. He's big and strong and powerful, and yet he's very shy, and often gets to be... The Electric Company, a 1971 TV series, was brilliantly directed by Ken Shapiro. Known for his innovative comedy background, Shapiro brought a unique vision to the show. He aimed to create a series that would help children improve their reading skills using humor and fast-paced sketches. Shapiro's creative influences included the avant-garde comedy scene and children's educational programming. He combined these elements to craft a groundbreaking style. The show's distinctive humor, visual effects, and eclectic mix of music were all part of his vision. Collaboration was key to Shapiro's approach. He worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging their input and ideas. This collaborative spirit resulted in a dynamic and engaging series that resonated with its young audience. Shapiro's direction was characterized by his commitment to storytelling and character development. He guided the cast in creating memorable characters and engaging stories. The result was a series that not only taught reading skills, but also entertained and inspired its viewers. In terms of visual style, Shapiro favored a vibrant, energetic aesthetic. The show's set design, costume, and animation were all designed to capture the attention and imagination of its young audience. This approach helped to create a unique visual identity for the electric company. Shapiro's direction of the electric company left an indelible mark on children's television. His innovative approach to storytelling, character development, and visual style helped to create a series that continues to be cherished by its fans. Hey, I got better things to do than listen to some dippy dame yakking on the phone. That's true. I'll, I'll talk to you. The Electric Company first aired in 1971, and it was an educational children's TV series that aimed to help young viewers improve their reading skills. The show featured a cast of talented actors, including Morgan Freeman, and Rita Moreno, who brought humor, energy, and creativity to every episode. Perhaps you have fond memories of watching The Electric Company as a child, or maybe you discovered it later in life. Either way, there are many surprising and interesting facts about this groundbreaking series that you might not know. For example, did you know that The Electric Company was actually a spin-off of Sesame Street? Or that it was one of the first TV shows to use rap music as a teaching tool? And while the show was primarily focused on education, it also tackled some serious social issues, such as racism and poverty. Of course, there were also plenty of laughs to be had along the way. From the hilarious antics of the show's cast to the zany sketches and jokes, The Electric Company was a show that could make anyone smile. But there were also some sad moments, such as when the show was canceled in 1977 due to funding issues. Many fans were devastated by the news, and some even credit the electric company with helping them learn to read and sparking their love of learning. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to the electric company? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. 
Whether you laughed, learned, or cried while watching this classic TV series, there's no denying the impact it had on generations of viewers. Hey, <laughs> you're right. It didn't hurt a bit. The Electric Company, a 1970s TV series, was produced with unique set designs, location, and logistical challenges. The show, aimed at improving children's literacy, was set in a vibrant cityscape, featuring a variety of locations such as streets, rooftops, and a comic book store. Set design was crucial to the show's appeal. The production team created a flexible, modular set that allowed for quick transitions between scenes. This innovative approach enabled the crew to maximize their limited studio space and create a dynamic visual experience for young viewers. The electric company also made use of them cutting-edge technologies, including chroma key compositing or green screen. This allowed the characters to interact with animated sequences and visual effects, enhancing the show's educational content and visual appeal. Logistical challenges included filming in real urban environments, which required coordination with local authorities and businesses. The production team also had to manage the show's large, diverse cast, which included both human actors and animated characters. Despite these challenges, the Electric Company's production team delivered a high-quality show that has endured in popularity. Its innovative set design, groundbreaking use of technology, and commitment to educational content continue to resonate with audiences today. The Electric Company, a children's show that first aired in 1971, has maintained its appeal over the years. Initially, I only had faint memories of watching it as a child, but after rediscovering it recently, I found pure joy in revisiting it. The Electric Company can be considered Sesame Street's hit, and funky younger sibling, as it shares the same objectives of entertaining and educating its young audience. One notable difference between the two shows is the length. While Sesame Street runs for a full hour, the Electric Company is half as long, suggesting that it was aimed at slightly older children with longer attention spans. The overall tone of the Electric Company is more lively and energetic, which is evident from its upbeat theme song that sets the stage for the rest of the show. Unlike Sesame Street, the Electric Company does not feature any Muppets and has a smaller cast of regulars. However, it does include brief vignettes of Marvel Comics Spider-Man and was the platform where actor Morgan Freeman first gained recognition as Easy Reader. The Children's Television Workshop, the production company behind The Electric Company, received funding from various federal programs such as the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the National Endowment for the Arts. This allowed them to produce high-quality educational content, although they were not an example of free enterprise or rugged individualism. Introducing The Electric Company to my four-year-old daughter has been a delight, as she enjoys dancing to the songs and finds Morgan Freeman's easy reader character to be the coolest thing. Reflecting on the show, I can only recall a few distinct symbols, such as the Spider-Man vignettes and easy reader, but these alone are enough to spark nostalgia and appreciation for this classic children's show. Done. <laughs> The Electric Company, a groundbreaking 1971 TV series, masterfully used music to enhance its educational content and engage young viewers. The show's composers and musicians created a memorable score and soundtrack that complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the series. Joe Raposo, the primary composer, was an accomplished musician with a knack for crafting catchy tunes that appealed to children. He drew inspiration from various musical styles including pop, rock, and R&B, to create a diverse and engaging soundtrack. Raposo's music was instrumental in establishing the show's distinctive identity and making it appealing to its target audience. The Electric Company score and soundtrack served multiple purposes. First, they helped to maintain the show's fast pace and high energy, ensuring that young viewers remained engaged and entertained. The music also played a crucial role in reinforcing the educational content with songs designed to teach literacy skills and reinforce phonics concepts. Collaborating with Raposo were musicians such as the popular R&B group, The Sweet Inspirations, who lent their talents to the series soundtrack. Their involvement brought a level of sophistication and professionalism to the music, elevating the overall quality of the show. The Electric Company's music was not only memorable, but also integral to the show's success. 
by combining engaging melodies with educational content, the series composers and musicians created a soundtrack that has endured in the memories of viewers for generations. Up. Will he fall asleep? Will you fall asleep? And Frank Oz, known for his work with Steve Martin in various films, was once a puppeteer on The Electric Company. Morgan Freeman, another cast member, developed his distinctive voice through his time at the LACC Theatre Academy, which has also been attended by notable figures such as Clint Eastwood and Mark Hamill. Interestingly, Gene Stapleton, who also starred in The Electric Company, played a small role alongside Carol O'Connor in a 1962 TV episode before they both became famous for their parts in All in the Family. <laughs> One of the most iconic scenes from The Electric Company is the Heather Hunter segment. In this scene, a character named Paula Poundstone introduces Heather Hunter, a young girl who struggles with reading but eventually succeeds with the help of her friends. The scene is directed in a way that highlights the importance of perseverance and teamwork. The performance of the actors, particularly of Heather Hunter, is both authentic and inspiring. The cinematography is simple yet effective, with close-ups of Heather's face that capture her emotions and determination. This scene had a significant impact on its audience, especially on young viewers who could relate to Heather's struggles. Many former fans of the show have shared stories about how this scene motivated them to improve their own reading skills. According to Morgan Freeman, one of the show's actors, The Electric Company was all about making learning fun and accessible. The Heather Hunter segment was a perfect example of that. Another iconic scene from The Electric Company is the silent e -skit. In this scene, a group of street performers sings a catchy song about the letter E and its various pronunciations. The scene is directed with a lively and upbeat tempo, and the performer's energy is infectious. The use of music and humor makes the scene memorable and engaging for the audience. The silent e -skit has become one of the most iconic moments of the show, and its impact can still be felt today. The song has been adapted and performed by various artists, and it remains a popular educational tool in classrooms. According to Bill Cosby, another actor from the show, the silent e-skit was a game changer. It made learning fun and memorable for kids, and it showed that education doesn't have to be boring. Overall, the Electric Company's iconic scenes are characterized by their creativity, humor, and educational value. The show's directors, performers, and cinematographers worked together to create moments that were not only entertaining, but also had a lasting impact on their audience. As Rita Moreno, one of the show's actors, put it, The Electric Company was a special show that left a mark on everyone who watched it. Its impact is still being felt today, and it will continue to inspire future generations. Mel Blanc, known for his voice acting in numerous cartoons, played a role in the radio series Major Hoople before his work on The Electric Company. The show, which was based on a comic strip and aired on NBC's Blue Network, starred Arthur Q. Bryan as Major Hoople and Patsy Morin as Martha Hoople. It ran from June 1942 to April 1943. Mel Brooks, who also appeared on The Electric Company, has had a successful career in film. He directed Gene Wilder in The Producers, earning Wilder an Oscar nomination. He also directed Madeline Kahn in Blazing Saddles, earning her an Oscar nomination as well. The Producers had a lasting impact on popular culture. The rock band U2 named their album a Chung Baby after a line in the film. The movie's title was also a nod to the fact that it was a satire of the Broadway musical genre, which had its own unique language and culture. In summary, both Mel Blanc and Mel Brooks made significant contributions to the world of entertainment before and after their time on The Electric Company. Their work has had a lasting impact and continues to be celebrated today. The Electric Company, a 1971 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences, particularly children, by using comedy, music, and animation to teach reading skills. The show featured diverse cast members, including African American and Latino actors, which was groundbreaking at the time, and helped make it relatable to a wide range of viewers. The Electric Company also influenced pop culture with its memorable characters and sketches. 
For instance, the Spider-Man segment, which featured the superhero's alter ego, became a fan favorite and helped popularize the character. The show's catchy theme song and jingles were also widely recognized and added to its appeal. Moreover, the electric company contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It tackled issues such as racism, poverty, and education inequality, using humor and wit to convey important messages. The show's approach to these topics was innovative and helped spark conversations among viewers, particularly children, about the importance of social justice. Overall, The Electric Company left a lasting impact on television and popular culture, paving the way for future educational programming and inspiring generations of viewers to become lifelong learners. Just take the time to read the signs, you'll be okay. Now that's the door for going. Mel Brooks based the character of Max Bialystok in The Producers on a former boss, a seedy theater impresario named Benjamin Kutcher. This revelation gives insight into the inspiration behind one of Brooks' most famous characters. In a different corner of the entertainment industry, Bill Cosby once publicly expressed interest in purchasing the National Broadcasting Company. This fact highlights Cosby's significant influence and ambition in the television industry. Barbara Eden, known for her role in I Dream of Jeannie, spoke highly of her co-star Larry Hagman in recent years. She mentioned an effortless connection and rhythm when acting with him, something she never experienced with anyone else. This testament to their professional relationship showcases the importance of camaraderie in the entertainment industry. The pink balloon, it's ja. And in this corner, oh. The Electric Company, a 1971 TV series aimed at improving children's literacy, received positive critical reception and audience reactions. The show was praised for its innovative approach to teaching reading skills through comedy sketches, animation, and music. The New York Times hailed it as a delightful new series that makes learning fun. The Los Angeles Times echoed this sentiment, calling it a lively, imaginative show that has a lot going for it. Audiences appreciated the series' humor and engaging format. Parents and educators lauded its effectiveness in helping children learn to read. The show's memorable characters, such as Morgan Freeman's Easy Reader, were particularly popular. The Electric Company received several awards and nominations, including a Peabody Award in 1972 for its outstanding contribution to children's education. It was also nominated for multiple Daytime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Children's Series and Outstanding Directing in a Children's Series. These accolades are significant for those involved in the film as they recognize the show's innovative approach to education and its impact on children's literacy. The awards and nominations also highlight the dedication and creativity of the cast and crew in creating a groundbreaking and enduring children's series. Well, what else you got? Move it! Oh, wait till you see this one, DR. You'll throw your hat in the air. Yeah, well it may come as a surprise that Frank Oz, known for his work on The Muppet Show, is not named after the character Fozzie Bear. In fact, the lovable bear is named after the Muppet Show builder Faz Fazakas. Moving on to Mel Brooks, he not only produced and wrote the music for the Broadway musical The Producers, but also created the original movie in 1967, which was later adapted into a musical film in 2005. Lastly, Morgan Freeman has appeared in two films alongside characters named Jack Ryan, including The Sum of All Fears and The Big Bounce. <laughs> the Electric Company, a groundbreaking 1971 children's TV series, brought together a talented cast and crew to create a fun and educational show. One anecdote from the set involves Bill Cosby, who was a regular on the show. He would often improvise his lines, much to the delight of the cast and crew. However, this sometimes caused issues when his ad libs ran longer than the pre recorded music cues, requiring clever editing to make everything fit together. Morgan Freeman, another cast member, was known for his storytelling abilities. During downtime on set, he would often share fascinating tales, captivating everyone with his expressive voice and engaging style. These stories not only entertained the crew, but also helped to strengthen the bond between them. The show's sketches often featured intricate choreography and props. In one particular sketch, the cast had to quickly and repeatedly switch between different hats to represent various characters. To ensure a smooth transition, they devised a system of hat racks and pulleys off camera, allowing the actors to swiftly change hats without missing a beat. 
behind the scenes, the crew faced numerous challenges, including working with limited budgets and tight schedules. Despite these obstacles, they managed to create a visually engaging and educational show that has left a lasting impact on generations of young viewers. The Electric Company stands as a testament to the ingenuity, dedication, and creativity of the cast and crew who brought it to life. Keen Stapleton, known for her work with playwright Horton Foote, who was once part of the children's chorus in the Electric Company, singing its theme song. Meanwhile, Mel Brooks, who was approached by Gene Wilder to direct the adventure of Sherlock Holmes' smarter brother, made a cameo in the show as the voice of a departing assassin. Giancarlo Esposito, another member of the show's children's chorus, went on to have a successful career in acting. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world of the electric company, highlighting the talented individuals who contributed to its creation. Now this sounds like good. The Electric Company, 1971 TV series, holds a significant place in film history due to its innovative approach to education and entertainment. As a pioneer in children's television, it skillfully combined live action sketches, animation, and music to teach reading skills to young viewers. This groundbreaking series significantly impacted future filmmaking by demonstrating the power of blending various creative elements to engage and educate audiences. The Electric Company's unique format inspired numerous children's television programs that followed, incorporating similar techniques to create captivating and informative content. Among the works directly inspired by The Electric Company are PBS's Reading Rainbow and Sesame Workshop's Ghost Rider, both of which built upon the foundation laid by the 1971 series. These shows, like The Electric Company, aim to improve literacy among young viewers through engaging storytelling and diverse characters. The Electric Company also had a profound impact on the careers of several involved in its production. Rita Moreno, a main cast member, gained renewed recognition for her talent and versatility, further solidifying her status as an accomplished actress. Additionally, the series provided early opportunities for now prominent figures such as Morgan Freeman and Joan Rivers. In summary, The Electric Company left an indelible mark on film history by demonstrating the potential of educational television and inspiring future generations of filmmakers and performers. Its innovative format and engaging content continue to resonate in the world of children's television. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I'll trade you for his doctor. Now wait. In 2006, Sesame Workshop released the Best of the Electric Company DVD box set, marking a significant milestone. For the first time, unedited episodes from the company's library became available for public purchase. This move provided fans with a unique opportunity to revisit the beloved series. Mel Brooks, known for his comedic genius, once shared an interesting anecdote. During the production of Blazing Saddles, Hedy Lamar sued the producers over the similar sounding name of a lead character, Hedley Lamar. Brooks found this flattering, as he believed it was unusual for a prominent actor to pay such close attention to such details. The lawsuit was eventually settled out of court. Zero Mostel, a talented actor, experienced a swift rise in his career during 1942. His salary at the Cafe Society increased from 40 a week to 450. He appeared in two Broadway shows, opened at the Paramount Theater, featured in an MGM movie, and performed at La Martinique for 4,000 a week. Moss tells success story is a testament to his hard work and talent during that period. This is a drag. I think you're right. Well, what else you got? Move it. Oh, wait till you see this one, D.R. You if you have memories of the 1971 TV series, The Electric Company, we'd love to hear them. Share your experiences and thoughts on how this groundbreaking show may have influenced your perspective on cinema. Did it leave a personal impact on you? How did it make you feel? We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations into classic television and cinema. Your engagement helps us continue to create content that you'll enjoy. Let's start a conversation and reminisce about the impact of The Electric Company together. We can't wait to hear your stories.